If you're ready to make the most of your Remarkable 2 or other e-ink tablet, you're going to want to grab this planner for 2024. It includes a ton of different layout options. You can choose between portrait and landscape pages, Monday or Sunday start, and right or left side menus. So you're sure to find a version that works perfectly with your tablet. So when you first import your planner, whether you're using the portrait or landscape option, you'll see this initial cover page and you'll have access to your entire toolbar here. If we just swipe over from the cover page, I've given you this really great getting started intro series where you're able to click through. You have some basic information on how to use the planner and tapping through to your navigation. I lay out for you the location of all of the links across the entire document. Now you also have your calendar pages with some details on where those links are and a summary of all of your bonus pages. And then that takes you into your goal clarity roadmap, which is really the foundation of the planning system included in this planner. So I guide you there first. I do recommend starting here when you first import your planner, it's a great way to get focused and go through some of these exercises before you actually jump into your calendar planning pages. So each of these steps link to a series of template pages, and it's really designed to guide you through the entire goal clarity process that I've laid out here. And it's really easy to navigate through. You just tap there. I give you some details and then you can go in and you're able to, you know, write all of your prompts here and then continue through. And it's also really easy to jump from one area to another through this top toolbar. You're going to notice this as a trend in the navigation throughout the planner is the ability to jump between various sections through that top navigation. And so you can see this process here is taking you from reflection through to setting your vision and focus. Then we do some work on time studies and figuring out how you can delegate things out or take things off your plate, building routines, and then ultimately designing your week. Once you do this, it gives you a really clear picture of where you have things already really filled in your schedule and where you have gaps where you can fill in time with new things in pursuit of your goals, which of course brings us to our goal setting. Now there's space for a deeper level of planning for 12 total goals. Now a goal should be like a larger effort that's going to take you possibly even a few months to pursue. And that's why you'll write that headline here and you actually go in and have this entire planning page where you can go through, specify your goal, and split it up into milestones with target dates. So you can see these are really larger efforts, something like, you know, training for a marathon or completing a home remodel project. Those are the level of things that you're gonna be using your goal for, and then you're able to break it up into tasks. Now I've also added in here for you, for each goal, a linked Gantt view and linked note page for taking notes on your goal. So you can see what we have here is really a full goal project management section built into this planner. Now to jump back anytime to that goal page, I just tap right there and you can see I can get down into any of my goal plans directly from this dashboard view. Now, similarly, the right toolbar is really where you'll be coming for jumping around to any section. So I can tap there and I can see my goal clarity roadmap. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this right side toolbar is specifically designed for having your tablet set up for right handedness. So my tools are on this side. Now, if I preferred my tools on this side, there's another version of the planner that I could import where your toolbar would be on this side. So just a reminder, I'm showing you one version of the planner here, but you do have both right and left handedness options with this planner. 
Now, once we've set our goals here, I help you figure out how to map your goals to actions. And that's really threaded throughout all of the calendar planning pages that I'll show you in just a minute. But this page here just gives you some tips on how to take your goals from those goal setting pages and thread them through to your weekly and daily planning. I'll show you all of that in a minute, but I just wanna show you here that this really is a full guided system. So if we tap down to our annual page, this is just your standard year at a glance page. The really great thing about this page is that you're actually able to navigate to any week or day or month of the year directly from this view in 2024. So for example, if I'm looking at a date and I want to jump down to July 11th, I just tap there and I'm right at the daily page. So there are a ton of hyperlinks hidden on this page and it really is a page that you can use to jump to any day of the year. Now, one of the things that is newer for this year that I'm really excited about is the ability to plan at a high level for upcoming years. So often, even though it's 2024, you might get some dates or some high level details of things that are happening in 2025 or even 2026. And so in this planner, I've given you space to do that. So all of the pages I'm about to show you, you have for 2024, 2025, and 2026. So obviously in this page for 2025 and 2026, they're not linked to any daily pages. The daily pages are only included for 2024, but it is great if you're planning things out to be able to jump forward quickly and just get that year at a glance to figure out how your dates are laid out. Now, we have a lot of other bonus pages for your year. First, you have this key dates page. This is my favorite way to keep track of birthdays and important dates coming up in the year. And again, this would be a great view for the upcoming years for you to use just to capture things at a high level when plans come up. Your quarterly view gives you a way to record things that are less time bound by a specific date, but more so just need to happen in a specific quarter. For example, maybe you know you need to get an oil change. Now there's not a specific date you need to do that, but you know you need to do it next quarter. You can write it here. Now the wish list is a really great way to step outside of your plans and think about things that you want for your year, things that you might want to learn, to make, to visit. Now you also have your tracker here. Your tracker is a great way to keep track of one specific thing about your health or your wellness that's important to you. I've had this request most often for cycle tracking for women. This could also be a great mood tracker. Now, if you are on a tablet that doesn't allow different colors, uh, like this Remarkable here, what I do is I use this for with symbols. So let me show you. I'll go ahead and designate the X for something, a dot for something else, an open circle for something else. And so I'm actually using my color key as a symbol key. Now moving forward to your health, this is a great place to record any notes on your health, important updates, make sure that you're scheduling appointments. There's a place to write down your appointments and check them off as you go. And then you also have this finance log where you can keep track of what's going on in your finances and throughout the year record those details. And then finally, you just have a blank note page. This is a great place to take some notes or even create a quick vision board. So again, just a reminder, I can easily go through and say, okay, now I wanna to go to my 2025 and I can easily navigate through with these options here. 
Now, just a reminder as I go through these bonus pages, since we're working digitally, the perk is being able to have a ton of different pages without carrying around the bulk of a book. So in these planners, I make them more expansive and I always need to remind you that you don't have to use every page. So it's very rare that you'll come in and use every bonus page on your year, month, and week. You'll just choose those that work well for you and are important to the things that you need to record. So I always like to remind you of that. Don't get overwhelmed by all the bonus pages. You can just use them as you need them and leave the rest. So let's jump down into our actual calendar pages. Now we've seen our annual page, but we also have a monthly page. So here's your monthly calendar page. Now, as far as location of links, you can jump down into any week simply by tapping on the week. And then also from the month, you can tap down into any day by tapping on that date. And then if we go to this page, you'll see you also have these bonus pages here for every month. So we have a reflection page. This is where, really where we start to loop back to that goal setting process. You can reflect back on your past month and then do some planning and really gain focus for your upcoming month. Now you also have a monthly tracker. This is where I like to do my habit tracking. Um, you can also use this scale. For example, I'll, I like to make this, you know, a mood tracker and write, you know, happy, sad, anxious, and then mark where I am on that tracker. Um, and then I've also used this before for an energy tracker as well. So like high energy to low energy and just kind of mark where I am on that scale. So this is really part of the habit tracker designed to allow you to track things that are more on a spectrum from low to high. Now, if we jump over, we also have uh, the ability to track our finances, and this works really well in conjunction with that annual financial tracker. And then, of course, your blank note page that you can use as a scratch pad or vision board, anything that you need. Now, if we jump down into our week, this is where we have space to just write out any appointments that we have and this is more of a dashboard view so you can also write out lists and you have some blank space for anything else you want to record. Now your weeks of course link out to your daily pages which I'll show you in a minute but you do have bonus pages on your week as well. We have this plan view here. Now, this is a view I really like if you're a student or a teacher for lesson planning, assignment tracking. Since I'm neither of those, I personally have used this as a log for uh, house tasks. I'll put, I'll label each stream for an area of the house and write down the tasks I have. I've also used it as a meal planner. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack one, snack two, and I'll write them down uh, there. Now, the weekly focus is really your weekly planning. Again, this is where we see us threading through our focus on taking action on our goals. And you have this wellness section as well, which is a really good focused view if you want to dial in things like your sleep, exercise, nutrition. Now we have a list view also, which is great if you want to be able to categorize your list. I personally like using this broken up list view to keep things separate from my business, my household, things for my kids. And it's great because you can just do a list sweep at the end of the week and select anything that remains and copy it over to the next week. And then you have your weekly blank page. Now, if we go back to our calendar view, we can jump by any tap here. We can jump down into our daily page. And so this is the final page that we have here where you're able to track by each day. You can write down your top priorities, keep your running to do list. There's also this schedule block here so that you can write things out in your schedule. And then, of course, you have your blank sidebar here as well. 
And I've made it really easy to get back and forth by adding this back to week button, which is really helpful. Most of us use our weekly page in conjunction with our daily page, right? Your weekly page is more of that dashboard view and then your daily page is where you do that detailed time blocking. So being able to get back and forth with a single tap really helps. So one of the biggest improvements in this year's version is to the note sections. And what we've done here for this version is we've pre-filled the note sections so that you don't have to use the template pages to fill them yourself. So what this looks like is we have up to 24 note sections. There's 20 in the portrait version. If I tap down into a note section, I can see I have all of these smaller bullet points. There's 15 of them. Each of these link to their own dedicated note page. So for example, what you'd be able to do is label your note section and then label what you're using each page for. And it makes it super easy to be able to jump down into any page in that custom section. Now you do still have your template pages that you can use and duplicate and place them in any custom section. So you can see here, we just have a ton of different, you know, 12 block, mind map, to-do lists, meeting notes. And so we have all of these different note pages that you can still duplicate and use, but we also have all of the sections already pre-filled with those blank note pages so that there's a super easy way to use those sections and make the most of them. And then as you need these alternate layouts, that's when you can duplicate and insert those pages in. I do have a whole video how to on that that I'll link in the description below. So that completes the video tour. If you do want more details, feel free to reach out to us either in the comment section or through the help link that I'll add to the description. Now you can also see additional details and some still shots of the planner in the listing images. I'll add the listing to the description as well. And if you enjoy using digital templates, please subscribe to my channel. I share tips and tricks and inspiration, so there's a lot more to come in the upcoming year. Thanks so much for watching.